The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 14514 in the name of Cara Hilton on protecting workers from violence and abuse. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press their request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would also further invite those members and indeed members of the public who are leaving the debating chamber to do so quickly and quietly, please. I now call on Cara Hilton to open the debate. Ms Hilton, you have seven minutes or thereby. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'm very pleased to have secured this debate on protecting workers from violence and abuse, and it's very fitting that we're discussing this issue during Respect for Short Workers Week. I'd like to begin by thanking USDOR for the briefing that they provided me with for today's debate, and also by declaring my interest as a member of USDOR for the past 16 years. Christmas is fast approaching, and for those who don't believe me, the John Lewis advert, the festive starting gun for many, was unveiled last Friday. In fact, my kids told me this morning there are now just 42 sleeps until the big day. But as we all prepare for the run-up to the hectic Christmas shopping period, there's a very serious issue at heart for John Lewis and for the countless other retailers who rely on the hard work and patience of their staff to deliver their service and indeed to boost their profits, not only during the festive period but throughout the whole year. The efforts of shop workers often go unnoticed as they assist stressed mums and dads in help ensure that our kids wake up on Christmas morning to both the must-have toy and their belief in the magic of Christmas still intact, and as they deal with shopaholics desperate for a bargain in the pre-Christmas sales. What shop workers do not deserve in return is the abuse, violence and threatening behaviour that escalates during the festive season. We all remember the chaos that was Black Friday last year. Shop workers assaulted, threatened, abused in the mad consumer dash for a bargain. Black Friday exposed the growing scale of a problem that USDA has been highlighting now for more than a decade. Every single day in the UK, more than 300 shop workers are assaulted at work. And in Scotland last year, 25,000 shop workers were assaulted simply for doing their job. Respect for Shop Workers Week is a welcome opportunity to urge shoppers to keep their cool, to encourage employers to take action to improve workplace security and to spread the message that abuse of any nature towards retail staff is simply not acceptable. And the message to workers who serve in our shops is equally important too. Abuse is not part and parcel of your job. Nowhere will you find a job description that requests experience in accepting abusive behaviour as desirable. But abuse and threats are a daily reality for thousands of our shop workers right across Scotland. Shop workers like my constituent Val, who called into the shop where she worked with her daughter to do a bit of shopping and noticed an individual who was banned from the shop. The individual was banned because they'd been caught shoplifting on several occasions. Val alerted her manager, who requested that because Val knew the individual, it should be her that asked him to leave. Out of loyalty to the company, Val did this, even though she wasn't working at the time. She was rewarded for her loyalty by being punched in the face. The assault was reported to the police, but despite Val being able to name her assailant and the assault being captured on CCTV, no one was ever prosecuted. Shop workers like Muir, who works in a busy convenience store in Glasgow, who worries constantly that he could lose his job if he sells alcohol to someone who can't provide proof of age or who is already intoxicated, who says that customers regularly become abusive and make threats when they refuse a sale or ask for ID. The shop worker in Livingston physically assaulted three times in the last 12 months, punched twice and most recently cut with a knife, but doesn't believe there's any point in complaining because this type of violence is just part of the course of a job in retail. Or the shop worker who doesn't want to be named for fear of reprisals, who says he's verbally assaulted every week and threatened with violence at least once a month. Recently, he was apprehended by a shoplifter who warned that she would spray him with the aerosol can she was holding and then set him on fire. These are just four examples from the front line and there are many more. In fact, USDA's most recent survey on violence at work in Scotland found that a staggering one in every two shop workers have been verbally abused in the last 12 months, with 8% experiencing abuse every single week. More than one in four shop workers in Scotland have been threatened in the past 12 months, and 9% have been victims of physical violence. And despite this, two-thirds of shop workers in Scotland don't report these incidents. And when we reflect on the outcome of my constituent Val's case, is this even a surprise? The latest analysis by the Health and Safety Executive of the Crime Survey for England and Wales found that there were 649,000 reported incidents of violence at work. 
They found that violence at work is on the rise at a, at a time when overall levels of violent crime are down. I would like to be able to refer to the Scottish figures, but it would appear that these are no longer collected by the Scottish Government. I would, I would suggest that the Minister um, review this decision to stop collecting and recording work-related crimes as a matter of urgency so that we can get a true picture of the scale of the problem here in Scotland. Presiding officer, USDA's Freedom From Fear campaign is doing a great job in raising awareness, but the only way I believe we can tackle this ongoing issue is through tougher laws. <laughs> laws which punish those guilty of committing acts of assault on people merely doing their jobs. In 2010, my Labour colleague Hugh Henry proposed a bill to give the rights and protections to retail staff that most of us take for granted at work. It is only right that when shop workers are in the firing line when it comes to protecting underage customers from preventing underage customers from buying alcohol and tobacco, that we put in place the measures to protect them when the consequences of doing their job take a violent turn. Scotland's shop workers deserve better, much better. Every worker has the right to be treated with respect and dignity by the public and protected from fear and danger by their employer. Unlike many debates in this place, this isn't about power. We've already got the power to act to protect shop workers in Scotland. And I hope, therefore, that the Scottish Government will think again and look afresh at taking action to protect shop workers and to protect all workers who serve the public. Workers who right now are exposed to daily abuse, which is simply unacceptable. Scottish Labour will pledge in our election manifesto for next year's holiday elections to do that. And I hope that in the new spirit of cross-party consensus on workers' rights, which was demonstrated this week in the debate in the Trade Union Bill, that the SNP will agree to match our pledge. No one in Scotland should work in fear of abuse, violence or intimidation. And we should be sending a clear signal from the Scottish Parliament that we will do not tolerate physical or verbal violence against working people in our country. Shop workers deserve more than warm words and sympathy. They deserve action and real support. With around 30 shop workers assaulted every single day in Scotland, that means 1,200 will be assaulted before Christmas Day. John Hannett, USDA's General Secretary, is right to say that enough is enough. I hope that the Scottish Government will listen and act and provide shop workers with the support they need and deserve. And I look forward to hearing what the Minister has to say about this matter, because everybody deserves to feel safe at work. It's time to send out a very clear message that abusing or assaulting workers who are serving the public is totally unacceptable. And it's time to act to make freedom from fear a reality for all workers in Scotland. In conclusion, I commend once more USDA's fantastic Freedom From Fear campaign. Christmas shopping can be stressful, but please spare a, shot, a thought for shop workers. Please keep your cool this Christmas. Many thanks. Very tight for time today. I now call on Hugh Henry to be followed by Roderick Campbell. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And I echo uh, what Cara Hilton has just said about the need to respect and protect shop workers. You know, she's right. We do take what they do for granted. And it's a shame that there's actually only one SNP backbencher here to participate in this debate, because it is an important debate for the hundreds and thousands of shop workers across the country who face intimidation, violence uh, and abuse on a regular basis. You know, the fact that two and a half thousand shop workers are assaulted in Scotland each year is frankly completely and utterly unacceptable. And, you know, in many respects, this is an easy debate for us. It's an easy debate for anybody to come in and participate in in this chamber. You know, who in their right mind could be opposed to saying that shop workers deserve respect? And indeed, so do bus drivers and train drivers and yep. postal workers and others who serve the public. Mm -hmm. They all deserve respect and they all deserve our support. But, you know, in a sense, they're looking for a bit more from us than just the warm words that Cara Hilton mentioned, because it is dead easy to come in here and say they have our support. What a fantastic campaign, the Freedom From Fear, that USDA runs is. And they're right. It is a fantastic campaign, and USDA is a campaign in union. And John Hannett has been right to put his, his, his lead into to, to this campaign. But so what that we say it's a great campaign? Because that doesn't make a difference to Val in Dunfermline, who was assaulted. It doesn't make a difference to Anne Wills, an USDA representative in Johnston, and my constituency and her members when they are faced 
with violence and when they are faced with abuse. And they're looking for a bit more from us than just the warm and weasel words that politicians can often give. You have our full support. This is absolutely disgraceful. We think something should be done about it. People should be nice to shop workers and others. Yeah, and what are you going to do, you who have the power to legislate, you who have the power to actually make a difference? Oh, well, do you know something? It's just a wee bit too difficult. It's not as easy as you think. And oh, we would love to, but we just can't do anything at this moment. Frankly, it's just utter garbage. Now, in this parliament, in 2005, we decided that medical staff did deserve additional legal protection, and for good reason. Assaults on hospital doctors and nurses was, was frankly, uh, beyond the pale. Well, in fact, no, that's not quite true, because we gave the support, presiding officer, to police officers uh, and, and to fire officers and other emergency service staff. And in 2008, the SNP government, who supported that legislation, decided that, in fact, there were other workers who were serving the public that also deserved that additional legal support. And quite rightly, they extended it to doctors and to nurses and to others. And I commend them for that. So why then will they not extend that same extra protection to those workers that they ask to challenge on the basis of age? When they ask those workers to challenge people who are buying alcohol on our behalf to say, no, you are not getting alcohol and to put themselves on the line to, for the, the, the assaults uh, and abuse that's been mentioned, why will they not give that additional extra support as well? So today should be an opportunity for us to say we give you our full support to us, to, to shop workers and to other public sector workers, but we are prepared to give you more than warm and weasel words. We are actually going to do something to give that protection a reality. Many thanks. I now call on Roderick Campbell to be followed by Margaret McCulloch. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak in this debate, and I congratulate Cara Hilton on bringing this to the Chamber. Violence against shop workers, as indeed our threats and abuse, are unacceptable in any circumstances. We all use shops, many of us at odd times of the day and night, and indeed, by virtue of the modern approaches to retail, on many occasions, workers are often few in number when we do shop. Those workers need reassurance that they can carry out their work free from intimidation. And it really is unacceptable, as, as to suggest, that 30 workers a day are abused or assaulted simply for doing their job. I recognise the importance of ASDA's Freedom From Fear campaign in raising public awareness. Many of us may have forgotten Black Friday last year, but in case you need reminding, that was the shopping day when retailers sought to boost pre-Christmas spending by discounting for the day. And it really brought out the worst in some people. I've read with horror the story of a shop worker working for a large retailer in Richmond, in leafy middle-class Richmond. The shop worker described that experience. Quote, I would say most of the people were 35 to 55 years old. That really surprised us. We were expecting youngsters, the 21 to 30-year-olds, but the ones we saw were very affluent. They were driving BMWs and Mercedes. I'd like to make some progress, if I can. And carrying designer handbags. In fact, the affluent people seemed to be the worst ones. The worst thing I saw during my shift concerned one young lad who worked for us who had learning disabilities. He liked talking to customers, but on this occasion, a customer slapped him on the forehead. They just leant over and slapped him, telling him he was stupid and should have been at home. That was perhaps an extreme, extreme case, but reports generally refer to scuffles between shoppers. That still places an inherent risk on overworked staff who might be expected to intervene in what one journalist described last year as walking dead type scenes with hordes of shoppers frantically clawing for their best bargains. Very few, if any, employers will operate anything less than a zero tolerance approach to violence against employees, however. This is right and proper as employers have a, care, a duty of care to their employees. But effective prevention of risk of violence is essential, as of course is raising awareness. That's why it's important for the Scottish Government to work with unions on the issue. And I hope that they will publicise more widely publications such as the Violence in the Workplace Guide or Unison's helpful documentation outlining what employers need to do to keep their workplace, keep the work for their workforce safe, particularly via the effective implementation of the Health and Safety at Work Act. 
advice for employers and staff on how to identify and diffuse trigger situations and behaviours which may result in aggression, physical violence or abuse is and remains important. The unions recognise the importance of workplaces and employers using preventative measures to avoid any assaults and shop workers and employees recognise that too. But the government has a duty. The government must recognise the importance and continue to work with employers, police, prosecution and courts to ensure employee safety at all times. And let's remember, of course, there are initiatives. The Scottish Government are investing in educational initiatives, such as No Knives, Better Lives, Medics Against Violence and Mentors in Violence Prevention. Through these initiatives, young people are learning that any form of abuse or violence will not be tolerated. And yes, I believe there is an issue on recording. USTA themselves believe that 22% of workers did not report incidents to their empl employer. And it's certainly not ideal that the most recent information in the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey goes back to 2008-9. At, at that time, 35% of staff had experienced verbal or physical abuse. And I'll be interested on the Minister's comments on what can be done to actually record this. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I thank Cara Hilton once again for bringing this important debate to the Chamber. Many thanks. Uh, and before I ask Margaret McCulloch to speak, uh, in view of the number of members wishing to speak in today's debate, I'm minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. I'd invite Cara Hilton to move such a motion. Thank you very much. Are members in agreement that we can do this? We are. Many thanks. So I therefore extend the debate Understanding Order Rule 8.14.3, and I now call on Margaret McCulloch to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Four minutes, please, or thereby. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak on Respect for Shop Workers Week and the wider Freedom from Fear campaign that USDA have been running on behalf of their members in the retail sector. I congratulate Cara Hilton for securing this debate and for giving us all, on all sides of the Chamber, the chance to express our solidarity with Scotland shop workers and our appreciation for the work of their trade union and the importance of this campaign. I was delighted to volunteer with USDA earlier this week in East Cobride as we took the campaign to customers and workers in the shopping centre, raising awareness of violence in the workplace and explaining the importance of keeping your cool during the busy and sometimes stressful Christmas shopping period. All over the country, USDA's representatives are reaching out and taking their message into shops and staff, and staff canteens. Abuse is not part of the job. Nobody working in our retail sector should expect to be abused or assaulted in the course of their duties. The vast majority of people out there know what kind of behaviour is acceptable and what is not. But with 2,500 shop workers assaulted in Scotland last year, it's a shame that some people still need reminding. If this campaign is enough to make people think again before lashing out at someone who is simply doing their job, then it's worth it. Of course, there is more to the campaign than what the public will see during the Respect for Shop Workers Week. ASDA distribute guidance to their members with advice on how to stay safe at work and they encourage their members to report abuse. There is evidence that violence in the workplace is underreported. There is also plenty of helpful information on their website, which I would encourage any shop worker to visit and find out more about freedom from fear. ASDA also help their union reps campaign on the ground to reduce the risk of violence in the workplace. This could mean lobbying employers or local authorities to take steps to make the workforce safer. The darker nights are here. So are our town, so, so are our town centres and high streets well lit and safe enough at night. Do shops have a good enough relationship with the police in their community? Are staff properly trained to deal with difficult customers? And do they know who to go to for help? These are just some of the issues which the campaign gets workers thinking about locally in their own shops and in their own communities. On a national scale, we also need to think about how we in this parliament play our part. Is there evidence that violence at work is underreported? Then should we be doing more to gather evidence and understand the problem? As legislators, are we really confident that the law as it stands is strong enough to protect these workers? 
Could new legislation act as a strong deterrent and prevent violence against shop workers and people working in the public-based jobs? We have to reflect on how we as Parliament respond to the campaign, not just with words, but with deeds. Deputy Presiding Officer, once again, I want to commend ASDA for all the work they do during Respect for Shop Workers Week. I also want to commend the workers themselves who are about to experience the busiest shopping period of the entire year. This debate has given us the opportunity to reflect on the risks shop workers are exposed to and how we can work together to mitigate those risks and make workplaces a safer place. Thank you. And thank you. And I now call on Murdo Fraser to be followed by Patricia Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Cara Hilton on securing uh, this debate and congratulate her also on an excellent contribution uh, in uh, moving her motion delivered with real passion. And I would agree, everyone has the right to work free from assault of fear or abuse. ASDA have, have worked hard to promote their Freedom From Fear campaign, seeking to protect shop workers from threats, abuse and violence. And I certainly think that's a very worthwhile uh, campaign and will do anything I can to publicise their efforts. Hugh Henry reminded us that back in 2005, the Scottish Government legislated to protect frontline emergency workers from threats and abuse at work. And while I supported the broader aims of that bill, I voted against it. I voted against it because I believed then, as I still do, that one single piece of legislation must exist to protect all workers, regardless of occupation. A two-tier structure that only protects those in the emergency services fails to grasp the whole issue. And I think Hugh Henry made an important... Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, I, I welcome Murdo Fraser's comments about legislation ex being extended to cover all workers. On the basis of, his, of what he's just said, then, would he support legislation that does give all public-facing workers uh, the same kind of level of protection? Murdo Fraser? I'm, I'm happy to reflect further on that point from Mr Henry. I, I, do, I do think there is something in what he says, and I think the logic of, of singling out particular groups is difficult. And therefore, I think a, a, a wide-ranging approach that covers everybody, to me, would make more sense. I'm happy to take that away and consider it further, because I think there is some sense in it. Cara Hilton mentioned uh, the chaos that was Black Friday, which is now nearly, uh, we're now nearly one year uh, on from. So this debate comes at a very important time for those working within the retail sector. While many people in this chamber will be looking forward to the Christmas period to get some time off to spend with family and friends, retail workers have to deal with long and unsociable hours particularly at that time of the year. And the last thing they should expect are customers who are either violent or abusive. And I can talk from some personal experience because my wife used to work in retail. And I remember her telling me stories on Christmas Eve of the, the shop workers trying to close the store doors at six o'clock so they could get home to spend some time with their family. And customers literally hammering on the doors trying to get in to get last minute shopping, having no understanding or sympathy for the fact that the workers needed to have some time to spend with their family. So I think shoppers and the public need to have a more responsible attitude. The week of Black Friday this year is set to attract one in five British shoppers, making it more popular than the week before Christmas. And nobody wants to see a repeat of some of the scenes we saw last year, where shop assistants played referee in fights over televisions and playstations. And if we're going to avoid the scenes of chaos that we saw last year, then I think retailers do have to do more to protect their employees. Huge discounts coupled with limited availability can only lead to one outcome, and retailers must deliver adequate security. Walmart in the US are employing an additional 25 employees at each of their stores, in addition to extra security personnel. Perhaps UK retailers could do likewise. And retailers must also make it clear that where assault and abuse happen on their premises, they will always seek prosecution. It's important that shop workers feel as though they have the full backing of their employer when dealing with customers. Because when it comes to such actions, the customer is never right. And we know that assaults on workers are not limited to shopkeepers. As we said earlier, frontline emergency staff, bus drivers, parking attendants have all to deal with abuse from members of the public, sometimes on a daily basis. I was particularly shocked to learn that assaults on traffic wardens in Perth and Kinross made up the majority of the 85 reported instances of that crime in Scotland uh, last year. In addition to legislative solutions that have been talked about already, I think the government should also seek to create 
a wide-ranging public information campaign and makes it fundamentally clear that there is a zero-tolerance approach to those who abuse shop workers and, indeed, all public-facing staff. So I hope that the Scottish Government will take a lead on this. I hope they will work with employers and work with the police. And I would close by, again, commending USDAW as powerful advocates for their members' rights, and I would congratulate them again on their campaign. Thank you. Thanks. I now call on Patricia Ferguson to be followed by Ian Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I add my uh, congratulations to those of other colleagues, to Cara Hilton, for securing the debate today at this very opportune moment, and also to USDA, the trade union, for its imaginative campaign and its uh, clever slogan of Stay Cool at Christmas, as well as the campaign materials, which are very arresting. No one should face abuse, intimidation or violence at work. And the figures around shop workers that we have for the rest of the UK are quite staggering. 300 shop workers assaulted every day, 55,000 incidents of verbal threats or physical abuse in the last year, and violence at work going up by 1% in the last year. Now, those figures are absolutely atrocious, and no one should be expected to tolerate the kind of behaviour that leads to that kind of behaviour in the course of their employment. But at least those are figures, as we've heard, that are captured. And I really would appeal to the Minister to see what he can do to ensure that figures for Scotland, from health and safety figures and from other sources, can be captured so that we at least have that picture, so that we can understand the scale of the problem and also what we need to do to try to bring whatever the figures are down because we have to have a zero tolerance approach to this kind of behaviour in my view and I'm sure the Minister would want to reflect on that. But we do also need to have legislation to ensure that public facing workers have better protection under the law, something that USDAW has long argued for. And I think personally that that uh, legislation should also, as um, Murdo Fraser rightly said, be accompanied by a campaign of public information. But I think we should go further than that, because I think some guidance to employers about what should be expected of them is important in this context too. I've spoken to workers who've told me about situations they've been in where they've been challenged or threatened by uh, people who shopped in their stores. And very often... It might be people they know because they live in that particular community. And when they've spoken to their manager about those uh, incidents, they've been told, well, you haven't got anyone to back it up. It wasn't seen. Or on another occasion, uh, well, we need the custom. Um, it couldn't have been that bad. Uh, just go and have a cup of tea and then get on with your job. Now, that kind of attitude is not acceptable where it exists. And we have to, therefore, address the attitude that employers take to this kind of behaviour. Obviously, there are those shopkeepers and, and organisations which are actually very good and very thorough and do operate a no-tolerance attitude towards attacks of whatever kind on their workers. But it seems to me that with the changes that we have in work life balances, that shop workers have become increasingly vulnerable over the years with 24-hour opening of supermarkets, where um, certainly I've noticed in supermarkets when I've happened to be there at um, less reasonable hours than I would probably hope to be there, that the staffing levels in those supermarkets are, are relatively low compared to what they would be during the day. Now, that's perhaps understandable, but it does make those shop workers who are there, and sometimes it's a relatively small number of people in a very large store, uh, more vulnerable because they can't always be seen. They're not always in direct contact with another member of staff. So we have to think about those workers too. Presiding officer, as we've heard, Black Friday has become uh, an import from the US that I think most of us would prefer not to have. And I was very pleased to read today that ASDA have decided not to participate in Black Friday this year, which, as they're part of the Walmart group, who are very much responsible for having brought it here in the first place, is perhaps quite ironic, but certainly to be welcomed, because the scenes we saw last year and the year before, to a lesser extent, are just absolutely unacceptable. And I think, you know, other colleagues have talked about that, so I'll not labour the point, but I do think it is unacceptable. Christmas is meant to be a season of goodwill, but for shop workers, it often isn't. It's often a time that, quite frankly, they dread. 
And given that it's followed on so closely by the January sales, it means that they have a perfect storm from the Black Friday um, shopping phenomena through Christmas please? and into those sales. And we need to make sure that they have any protection we can give them. So I would close, presiding officer, by just wishing all shop workers well at Christmas and hope that they do get the opportunity to enjoy at least some of the festive season with their families. Many thanks. I now call on Ian Gray to be followed by John Wilson. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, President Officer. My thanks to go to Cara Hilton for securing this debate on what is an important annual campaign. Important, uh, for one thing, because of the number of workers uh, it encompasses. Uh, after all, Tesco and Asda are the two biggest private sector employers uh, in the country nowadays. Earlier this week, I spent some time at the Asda store in the Jewel, not far from here, uh, talking with them about their uh, apprenticeship programme. Uh, and that store employs 500 uh, colleagues, as they call them, uh, in Asda. It is a huge uh, local employer. And the truth is, uh, as Patricia Ferguson mentioned, that whether it, it is supermarkets or indeed small shops, uh, we now demand longer hours, perhaps even 24-hour shopping, wider product ranges always available, uh, and the lowest of low prices. Um, we want what we want, when we want it. Uh, and as a number of colleagues have uh, talked about, that's been seen at its uh, worst uh, in the uh, scenes that we saw on television uh, from Black Friday last year. But the truth is that whether it, it is that or whether it is a sole shop assistant facing an aggressive attempt to buy drink underage uh, in a small corner shop, it is always shop workers who are in the front line and they deserve our support. As Hugh Henry uh, outlined, that support really should be given in the form of stronger protection in law. Uh, and it is to our shame that unfortunately in previous attempts, including Mr. Henry's own attempt, we have failed to do that. In the absence then of that legal protection, it is incumbent on us, I think, to show support by raising awareness and uh, acknowledging the respect that shop workers uh, should have. Uh, I was therefore very pleased yesterday to join uh, Colin Hunter, the ISDO shop steward, uh, in my own local Tesco in Haddington uh, on his stall uh, promoting the Freedom From Fear campaign. Colin's uh, members provide great service uh, to the community with great patience. I can say that from uh, much personal experience. I live. Uh, perhaps a couple of hundred yards from the store and visit it much more often than is good for my debit card. But even there, uh, in my respectable and well-behaved hometown of Haddington, uh, staff were able to tell me stories of abuse and aggressive behaviour which they face on a day-to-day -day basis from some customers. That is why uh, we should send a strong message from this debate and from this parliament to those shop workers that they deserve both our respect, but above all, freedom from fear as they go about their business. Many thanks. Now I call on John Wilson to be followed by James Kelly. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to congratulate Cara Hilton for bringing this debate to the Chamber. This is a debate that we've held often as a member's debate over the years that I've been here. This is an important issue and I believe often overlooked one. Shop workers in this country are some of the hardest working people and shop work is often low paid with long hours and high stress levels. As Cara Hilton mentioned, Christmas is just around the corner. While we will enjoy a recess period, many shop workers across the UK will be required to work. Also welcome the decision uh, by ASDA, as mentioned by Patricia Ferguson, to withdraw uh, from participating in Black Friday a situation where many shop workers found themselves under physical, verbal and other forms of abuse uh, in previous years. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day and over the New Year too are times that workers, the shop workers are expected to be there delivering services and we much underappreciate uh, the work they do. And I hope we can keep in mind the stress that shop workers are under during this busy period. I'd also like to congratulate USDO on respect for Shop Workers Week. The campaign has been ex excellent in raising awareness of workers' rights 
encouraging reporting of assault and supporting co-workers. These things are vital in creating a safe, fair and reasonable workplace. If we want to encourage people into work, then it is vital we show people that work is worth doing, is respected and is safe. The current rates of abuse, both physical and verbal, towards shop workers is shocking. I saw firsthand a couple of years ago uh, in a retail outlet that I visited as part of the Challenge 25 campaign, and I saw the verbal abuse that was meted out to a shop worker who decided to challenge a shopper regarding their age. And clearly, if the Scottish Government expects uh, to put forward legislation, then these workers who are carrying out the wishes of the Scottish Government should be afforded the full protection in carrying out their job. And that's the full protection of the law, and we should ensure that message gets out quite clear. Presiding officer, this issue applies to workers across the board. If we are to be serious about supporting workers, including shop workers, about respect at work, then we must continue to fight for and provide workers' rights. We must work together in this Parliament to ensure that all workers receive respect and dignity in work. And that respect and dignity is a right, not a privilege. We see at the present moment the opportun opportunity for this debate to take place when we see the Conservative government down south deciding to slash benefits and impoverish working families. Many of those working families rely on the retail sector for their employment and also because of the, the announcement regarding the Trade Union Bill. The Trade Union Bill will strip workers of the rights to organise, to protect, protest and to bargain collectively. The right to organise and collective action has a, been a long, strong tradition in Scotland and the UK. The Trade Union Bill's attempt to undermine that tradition are an insult to working people, stripping unions of their rights and of their ability to fairly, accurately and freely represent workers is an insult to the hard-working people of the UK. If we are to urge society to show respect towards workers, then this government must lead by example. Respect for workers is vital to reduce abuse and provide a safe working environment for people across Scotland and the UK. So I commend us, though, for their excellent campaign and wish them the best of success in future work. I also must emphasise again that respect for workers begins by facilitating the rights all workers deserve. Providing a proper living wage without slashing benefits, providing a strong and robust trade union rights and encouraging workers to stand up for their rights, whether that be against employers or consumers, is the only way to properly protect workers' rights, safety and dignity. I look forward Mr. to George the action Lewis, being taken please. by the Scottish Government to send out a strong message that we will not tolerate abusive or physical violence in the workplace and make every effort to stamp out such actions in the future and so every worker deserves dignity and respect at their workplace. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on James Kelly, after which we will move the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Like the, the other speakers in the debate, I want to congratulate uh, Car Hilton on bringing the motion forward for debate and also in making a very excellent contribution which has set the tone uh, for the, the debate that we've had. I think it's actually been a very useful debate, not only to highlight the issues involved with uh, shop workers who uh, unfortunately face uh, abuse and intimidation, but also there have been some very practical suggestions which I'll draw in throughout my contribution, which I hope the Minister uh, will take up in his uh, summing up. Uh, it's right that us do focus on this issue at this time of year, as Cara Hilton uh, Cara Holton's children reminded us it's 42 sleeps to Christmas uh, and as we embark on the run into Christmas uh, people rush to the shops and they often forget the, the, the other, what's going on at the other side of the counter and I think that's what the, the ASDA survey shows you you know it's, it's quite shocking when you look at the statistics and you, you see that uh, nearly a third uh, of people have been threatened uh, and up to half uh, have been abused. You know, that, that just seems almost unimaginable that people would have to put up with uh, that sort of behaviour uh, in their work, workplace. And that's what's going on on the other side of the, the, the counter as people go about 
their uh, Christmas shopping duties. Uh, and it's underlined by the, the Black Friday experience that like other people have spoken to the, the stewards in my local area, rather than Tesco, and they endured quite an awful time last year in, in Black Friday as customers fought over uh, goods, you know, and uh, abused the staff for not being able to get a particular kind of uh, abuse. It's uh, uh, stock uh, is totally uh, unacceptable. And I think one of the worrying things was the very much to be congratulated on running this campaign on a regular basis. It's a real matter of concern, the fact that um, assaults are actually on the increase. And I think that then leads to the question as to that a lot of people have drawn on in the debate, what are we actually going to do about it? Uh, war and words are fine, but what, what, act, what actual actions can we take? I think the collection of the, the actual statistics is something that the Minister can draw on, because if, we're all, if, we're, if we want to understand the extent and do something about the extent of the problem in Scotland, uh, it's important that we have the accurate uh, statistics. I think there's a responsibility on retailers uh, it's welcome that they've listened to police advice and there'll be more retail security on Black Friday, but that shouldn't apply to just one day of the year. That should apply throughout the year so that workers uh, are properly protected. Um, I think uh, I support Murdo Fraser's suggestion of a public information campaign. I think if the government really got behind this, it would not only raise awareness of the issue, but raise awareness of the fact that abuse and intimidation of shop workers is totally uh, unacceptable. And I think, finally, there is uh, an onus on the government to look at legislation in this area. It's all very well having these debates and people making fine speeches, but we come to this parliament to make a difference. And there is an opportunity to make uh, life and work a bit safer for many of our constituents here. So in summing up, uh, again, congratulate can, uh, Cara Hilton in bringing the debate forward. Uh, I think there have been many fine speeches and sentiments, but I hope in his summing up, the government minister is able to give some assurances as to how the government will actually take some of the suggestions forward that have been made in the debate. Many thanks. Now we now move the closing speech from the minister. Minister Paul Wheelhouse, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I, I very much want to thank Cara Hilton for bringing this debate to the Chamber. She made an excellent speech, I think, and uh, it's on a matter of profound importance, uh, I think, to all of us have constituents who are, who are affected by this, working in a sector that we often take for granted, and I think a number of members have reflected on that, not least Cara Hilton, um, and a number of members have also commented on the fact that most of the workers in the sector are low-paid, working long hours, difficult hours, 24-hour hours, uh, in terms of some of the points that Ian Gray has made as well, in terms of local shops in East Lothian. So I think uh, we all have to reflect on that as a society, but also in this parliament. The Scottish Government believes that we all have a right to live our lives free from crime, and the fear of crime, and I welcome us those contribution and campaigns such as uh, Freedom From Fear, and we would encourage all shoppers to show respect for shop workers this week and indeed beyond, as James Kelly said, all year round, uh, rather than just this time of year. There is no doubt that every violent incident is a traumatic event for the victim and can often result in injury and ongoing problems, the psychological uh, harms as well that can be caused uh, to people's confidence in going to work and, and fear of going to work. As Osdor's survey, survey shows, the front line of retail can be particularly tough for many shop workers, especially uh, in incidents like uh, last year's Black Friday um, that Ian Gray and uh, others have referred to. Without the retail sector workers serving the needs of members of the public, our communities would not be able to function effectively. And that is why it's important that when such workers are attacked in the course of their work, it's critical that our justice system responds uh, effectively to send a strong signal uh, that we do not tolerate such behaviours. And I am concerned to hear about some of the examples that Cara Hilton has referred to. I'm not going to brush over them. I'm happy to look at what, what went wrong there in relation to those, but our police prosecutors and courts have extensive powers to deal with those who commit such offences against shop workers and other public facing workers. For example, the common law of assault allows for maximum penalties all the way up to life imprisonment for the most serious offences. And, and as I say, I do acknowledge the cases that were raised, but prosecutors in Scotland are clear that they always seek to ensure justice is served when offences are committed against workers. 
They take a robust approach to prosecuting and will always mark cases for prosecution in such a way so that uh, appropriate sentences can be handed out by courts on conviction. And courts will look at the circumstances of an offence and sentence based on, amongst other matters, the context within which the offence was committed. So I reiterate, reiterate this point uh, that our justice system is sending out a strong message to those who fail to respect public facing workers and the valuable service that they do provide that unacceptable behaviour will not be tolerated. Um, as I say, let us not forget that in many cases retail workers may not be well paid and indeed may be doing a very tiring job for only modest rewards. And along with ensuring an effective response from the justice system, we've also been focusing on tackling the underlying causes of such violence and we're seeking some, seeing some major reductions as a result. Uh, time is against me, but I would suggest that you know, Scotland in general is becoming a, a safer place to live. But I do note uh, clearly that this one sector of, of the economy and one group of people who are, uh, still feel they are vulnerable to, to assault. I'm aware of statistics which I could have quoted will be of little comfort to, um, to any individual who experiences violence, whether they're shot workers or not. In relation to the statistics point, which a number of members have raised, Rod Campbell, Patricia Ferguson, Cara Hilton, of course, James Kelly and others, the content of the Scottish Crime and Justice Survey is regularly reviewed to ensure the survey continues to um, provide high quality evidence on a wide range of policy areas in a cost effective manner. Uh, such questionnaire reviews also ensure that the survey is kept to a manageable length. So we do not place an excessive time burden on respondents. But having said that, the SCGS is currently under review in advance of the 2016-17 survey, and I, I will certainly make sure the points that are raised today about um, uh, these particular crimes are, are taken on board and see if there is any, any scope to, to enhance the data in that respect. Um, indeed, high-profile tragedies can and do, of course, occur. Uh, and as tragically demonstrate, violence can have a devastating impact and extend far beyond the victims um, or pe perpetrators indeed involved to their families, friends, and indeed can impact on the community as a whole. So I do believe we're going in the right direction in tackling violent crime, but I do acknowledge the concerns that have been raised today across the chamber and uh, we'll, we'll take that on board. We do need to look at see to see if there are ways in which we can enhance our activity. Along with increased policing, we know that tackling the underlying causes of violence will help reduce the number of assaults Rod Campbell's observation about Black Friday in Richmond shows that uh, this violence emanates from across the whole spectrum of society. It's, it's typical people point the finger of blame at one part of the community, but clearly when people who are carrying Gucci handbags or, or assaulting staff in, in shops, uh, this affects everybody and we've all responsibility to look to our behaviour. And that's why uh, we continue to work in partnership with the National Violence Reduction Unit um, to see that violence is pre preventable, uh, it's not inevitable. Their groundbreaking work helps us identify, develop, promote and coordinate best practice in tackling violence and violent crime and I've heard moving and, and highly compelling testimony from those who have been perpetrators of such crimes as to the, the, the regret they have and they're putting back into the system uh, their experience. Uh, if, if I have uh, yes. the permission of the President, officer, yes of course. Just to ask the Minister whether in these discussions that he's having with the Violence Reduction Unit would it be possible to consult the unions and bring the unions on board in these discussions because clearly as though have highlighted and it, it, by their numbers that there is a serious issue out there that has to be addressed and it might be useful to bring them into the debate so they can actually give it a clear indication of what should be happening. I'm happy to take that point on board, presiding officer. I think it's important we do engage with trade unions on these issues and I will look to uh, see how we can involve trade unions in discussions around this specific issue. But we continue to invest. I think Rod Campbell talked about education um, and we need to, to highlight we are continuing to invest in No Knives, Better Lives, which he referred to, Medics Against Violence and Mentors in Violence Prevention. These are all important programmes that try and uh, get the important messages out, particularly to young people on the dangers and consequences of getting involved in violence and to help to provide them with opportunities. It was interesting, the point about the older age group in the case of the Richmond incident that it was not, and, and others have said it's not just young people. Um, I'm afraid I'm running short of time. I apologise to Ms Ferguson. I've, I've got quite a lot to get through. Um, it's important, unless the presiding officer has uh, any further latitude. <laughs> if you wish, if you wish. Ferguson. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take Ms Ferguson in later. It's important we encourage young people to talk about violence prevention, about difficult subjects such as relation to alcohol uh, and drugs indeed, uh, to speak out against uh, all forms of violence, but I think in this context specifically, this kind of violent behaviour that happens to public-facing workers. 
Initiatives such as these um, obviously focus on young people and learning that any form of abuse or violence would not be tolerated. But I do take the point about public awareness and reaching out to other parts of society. And uh, Mentors in Violence uh, Prevention is currently running in nine local authorities across Scotland and further for a started engagement. Uh, we are investing significantly in this, but I'm conscious of time. Um, I want to focus in particular on a point that was related to Margaret McCulloch spoke about employers, as did Rod Campbell, Murdo Fraser, Patricia Ferguson. Uh, just to highlight, we are investing uh, through the Scottish Business Resilience Centre, uh, working in partnership with them to raise awareness through producing a number of publications, including the Violence in the Workplace Guide, mentioned by Rod Campbell, but also working with an SME and Retailer's Guide to Crime Prevention, which provide in-depth advice to employers and staff on how to identify and diffuse, uh, diffuse uh, trigger situations and behaviours which may result in a aggression, physical violence or abuse. I do welcome the decision by, by ASDA if they've reflected on what happened last year, as a number of members have mentioned, to, to withdraw from having their own Black Friday. That's a commercial decision, but I welcome it from the point of view of thinking about the impact on their workers. When a wide-ranging retail crime reduction presentation has been created by SBRC and is available to all police officers across Scotland who engage with shop and retail staff, ensuring consistency of approach and messaging. Um, the SBRC also provides excellent support through initiatives such as Best Bar None, Safer Shopping Award, Safer Retail Award and the Safer Areas Scheme and the Scottish Government is supporting these and many other initiatives and they are inspiring some great work and practice. Um, before I conclude, I don't know whether Patricia Ferguson wishes to, to come in, Presiding Officer, or she's happy to leave it. Okay, um, thank you. Um, no one could disagree, uh, Presiding Officer, that shop workers deserve protection and that is what our current criminal laws help to ensure. And I welcome this opportunity to discuss Cara Hilton's motion and again thank her for bringing this important subject to the Chamber. There is certainly an increased pressure on shop workers in the run-up to Christmas, as has been said, with increased sales. And while tempers may be short, there is simply no excuse for any act of aggression or violence towards shop workers, many of whom, as we have all said, will be working long hours uh, and including uh, workers obviously doing home deliveries, which is a new phenomenon that reflects, uh, as Patricia Ferguson stated, changes in behaviours, people delivering to our homes. I believe that our approach is, is broadly right and that our firm focus on increased policing and prevention is already providing results and is helping to reduce violent crime for everyone in Scotland. But I do take on board the, point, the important points men mentioned by members today and just stress that respect costs nothing. Uh, and that's the very least that we should do as we shop at Christmas. Show respect to our shop workers. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, and thank you all for taking part in this important debate. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30. <laughs>